Hey everyone, welcome back to the range. My name is Matt, also known as the king of armor destruction, the armor wizard, zap zap. We have a body armor demo today in full transparency. I bugged the crap out of RMA defense and they sent over a pair of 1155s for us to test. Now, if you know or have heard anything, RMA actually lost their NIJ certification on this particular model. For whatever reason, they are currently appealing it but when they had a follow-up inspection testing or fit test, that's when the NIJ comes into the manufacturer and takes a random sample of their NIJ certified plates and then sends them off to a lab to have them threat tested to ensure that you know plate serial number, whatever 10,005 and 10,009 are built exactly the same as the plate that was actually NIJ certified lives up to its claims. During one of those fits at the beginning of 2023, one of these plates actually quote unquote failed to stop an M2 armor piercing round. Now I'm gonna roll some pictures in here from RMA that show that their plate from what I can tell, did not have a penetration. There's a whole bunch of back and forth on whether the lab that the NIJ sent these to didn't clean out the giant clay briefcase before doing these tests. But from what I can see in these pictures from RMA water jetting this plate in half, there looks to be at least eight to 10 layers of our backer left and I can see no penetrations. For those of you that may not know the specs on R1155, this is a single curve 10 by 12 plate known for being very economical. It's a little on the hefty side, eight pounds, 8.4 ounces, or 3.86 kilograms. It is approximately 1.05 inches thick, or 26.69 millimeters. As I mentioned, it is single curve. We just have that one slight rolling curve across the sides there. Normally, when you get multi-curve, you have more curves this way. Now, if this is the first time you're coming across my channel, we do all of our body armor demos completely different than everyone else on YouTube. I want you guys to take as much data away from these tests as possible. I try to be a little bit entertaining as well, but I wanna shoot actual worst case scenario threats at some of these so that you know in the real world with you know shorter barrel lengths or at range, if you're concerned about stopping M2 armor piercing and I stop something here going at an insane speed, you know in the real world, it's gonna stop it. So since this is rifle armor, we shoot at 45 feet. That is the official NIJ testing distance for armor. We also shoot at zero degrees because that represents worst case scenario. We also use a giant clay briefcase filled with Roma Plastilina number one clay. That is the same clay that the NIJ uses, but out here in my backyard, I can't heat it up to the temperature needed to certify it. So we're just looking at a general representation. In my clay, if you were ever to see some kind of back face in excess of like, you know, 50 to 60 millimeters in warmer NIJ, clay that would considerably that would be considered failing because you're only allowed 44 millimeters now for any of our fit testing they actually don't measure back face they're there just to check for penetrations we also use a chronograph whenever possible a pro chrono pal digital dlx because we need to know the velocity of that bullet for the nij06 level 4 or the nij07 upcoming rf3 you only have to stop one round of M2 armor piercing, but it has to go 20, 80 feet per second. And you won't see that out of a 22 inch or a 24 inch 30-06. So we've actually had to load it in 300 Winchester Magnum to get that particular velocity. The NIJ labs use a universal receiver. Since this employs a ceramic strike face per the NIJ, I've actually gone ahead and dropped it on its face two times as a preconditioning test. You'll denote over here in the corner that I've marked each plate that I have here as number one and number two. The DT indicates that I've done the drop test and a TQ means that it has passed a torque test. That's where I take each side of the plate and apply opposing forces to listen for any cracks. This particular plate has drop face foam protectant on it and because I know it's made out of alumina, I generally don't ever hear any cracking with an alumina plate. This does employ a complete edge to edge ceramic strike face. Now again, for that fit test, they also don't do a drop test, but I figured since we wanna remain as consistent as possible over here when we're doing our armor demos, I just went ahead and included our drop test. I wanna remind everyone that I am not an NIJ lab, even though I just keep talking about all these lab constants. So if you see a threat penetrate over here or a threat stop, you should always defer to the manufacturer for any official lab test results. And on the flip side, 
If you're the manufacturer and you see me stop M2 AP going 3,000 feet per second here, you should have that added as a special rifle threat to your plate. And finally, we put a spreadsheet here at the beginning that we kind of foreshadow all the threats that we're going to shoot at it. We mark our velocities and our penetrations, and we do a tear down at the end because a lot of people are always interested in what the inside of our plates are going to look like. Plate number one is strapped in and ready to take a beating. As I mentioned, our level four spec is 2880 feet per second plus or minus 30. So 2910 is the max variance. And because of my loads, I try to load them at once. The temperature, I think, has sped them up a little bit. So I'm sometimes 30 feet per second or more over the max variance. That could be detrimental to some plate designs. There is a little bit of safety factor built into a lot of plates, but some plates build to the minimum standard. Now, I don't sort my M2 AP bullets by lots or hardness. It's pretty much just I pull them out because I've collected them over the years. The NIJ labs have a little more consistency than that. We're not running the suppressor on here for now. We're going to take our first shot center of mass right on that star. Twenty nine, twenty nine. so we were over spec. Now before we continue, we're gonna go look at that shot. Our first shot was right there, pretty much dead center. I think I was a little high, I wanted to be on the star, but that's pretty much center of mass. Place those bets in the comments below. No pass through, folks. That is, there's the label is still intact. So I'm not calling out the NIJ labs. I'm just questioning the process that happened during this fit test. To me, I would say some of the failures that happened, I would have invalidated the test and then required a follow-up, then a second one to confirm. You know, some things I think should happen from going forward is that for fit tests, everything should be video recorded. We should make sure that the clay is cleaned or some kind of witness paper put behind it so that there is a discrepancy. And then it's a lot easier to invalidate those results or call them into question or confirm them instead of going through months of, you know, back and forth and then now in an appeal. That was over the spec in the same general area and it stopped it. So what are we gonna do? We're going to shoot more M2 AP at this plate. We were in spec that time. Then this one, I'm going to go bottom left hand corner, or right hand corner, I should say. Our shots, I believe, our fair hits, shots number two and three. Remember, for 06, it's one M2 AP center of mass. We're not considered any lesser threats with 308, 556. Those would be considered special rifle threats on a level four. They don't rate it at lesser threats. Now, I do believe with the upcoming 07 RF3, you can have up to three hits on a plate, but you don't get any... Uh, the notion that it is better than a single hit. Place those bets in the comments below. Probably gonna hit myself with these straps. No pass throughs, folks. We are getting a little bit of a dimple up there and we're breaking this plate. This does not have a laminated strike face, but there is no pass through there and no pass through down there. Now our plate's a little bit warm because it's got to stop that mean M2 AP round, but no pass through, three rounds of M2 AP. Now that we've compromised plate number one, let's throw some 556 five, threats at it. We've got M193, M855, and M855A1. M193 is a 55 grain full metal jacket. M855 is a 62 grain full metal jacket with a conical steel penetrating chip. And M855A1 
is an evolution of that. Has a copper core and a larger, harder arrowhead steel penetrating tip. We'll take the three shots of the A1 last. The three of the green tip second, then the M193 first. I've got a 22 inch TC compass here with a turbo 556T3 on here. So this is maximum real world, real world velocity. It is colder, cooler outside today, so I'm not seeing you know, 3,500 feet per second from the M193. This is gonna be in the top of the plate. And then this next one will be right next to it. Slight intermission while I hook up the light bars. Now we're getting velocity. Last shot of M855. Now the A1. Nice. All right, let's go see what we did. All right, I believe all these shots for me are considered fair hits, but maybe not so much for the NIJ. M193 shots number one, two, and then three. This one was, you know, about an inch from the edge. Then our M855 shots number one, two, and three. And then our M855A1 shots number one, two, and three. Helper hand, I'll have you hold the plate why I take these super hard straps off here. Let her go, help her hand. Ra oh, Raggy. We had just two penetrations. Our M193 over here that's on the edge and the First shot of our M855A1s, shots number, or sorry, the second shot of M855A1. The first shot and the third shot were stopped. Plate number two is ready to go, and we're gonna repeat the same M2AP hit center of mass. We put the suppressor on our 300 wind mag here, so we may gain a little more velocity. Same M2AP load. And now for two of my specialty loads, these are our 300 wind chad. Essentially, these are 30 caliber threats that I have driven to 300 Winchester Magnum Velocity. This is our M80A1. This is the US Army's current issue ball round in 762 NATO. 130 grains, copper core, very large, hard arrowhead tip. And this is M14A1 API, Mr. Flashy Flash. That's 150 grain full metal jacket with a little armor piercing incendiary and it's very hard little core. I'll take that shot second. This shot's gonna be on the top of the shield. Almost 3,500 feet per second. Then Mr. Flashy Flash, put him down, you know, Let's put him over in the corner too, uh, the opposing shield. Hear that pop, I love that stuff. So much fire, so satisfying. All right, our shots are fair hits. Our M80A1 300 wind chad and our M14A1 plus P plus were right there. And then our single hit of M2AP was right in the center of mass and that was above the NIJ spec. Helper hand. 
Uh oh, Raggy, we have a pass through on the API. But look at down here, there is no pass through from that standard M2AP load. I think at this point, we've proved our point that this plate certainly can do everything that it's rated to do and then some. I have one more threat that we're gonna shoot at this plate and it's kind of a just because. This is Winchester M80 ball. So this is gonna be almost 3,000 feet per second coming out of this thing on a compromised plate. So this shot's gonna be right next to the K for King. Right hand side. Nice. All right, our final three hits. Number one, two, and three, those should be fair hits, keeping a two inch shot dispersion. Place those bets in the comments below. Uh oh, Raggy. We finally had a penetration. Oh, excuse me, folks. We have two penetrations. We have this guy that blew out right there. And then we have a little bit of a penetration down there. It would appear that that many higher power shots on this particular plate design are a little too much for it. Generally speaking, once I throw that M14 A1 API at that, it does a really good job at blowing apart the plate. But we still stopped our M2 AP dead center above spec M80 A1 plus P plus. Now for everyone's favorite, the teardown. That's where we can look at the guts of our plates and confirm any penetrations. This was plate number one. There is our serial number right there. As you can see, there is no penetration of our single hit of M2 AP in the center of mass on there. And peeling away the back cover, there is nothing. This particular backing material is like a fiberglass type stuff. It's called e-glass. Our only penetrations on panel number one were the M855A1 down here and this M193 on the edge there, very close to the edge. They do press their backers. You can see how well this is pressed together even after taking all those hits. You know, some threats start to delaminate it, but otherwise it is still fairly intact. Again, there is that M2AP load. There is no penetration into the plate there. I measured our backer around 375 thousandths thick. This mess that you see right here is the strike face. You know, I always offer constructive criticism to any manufacturer that I test. And, you know, from testing from quite some time, I recommend that they laminate this strike face because adding a lamination layer keeps all this ceramic crap together as long as possible and makes it more multi-hit capable. Of course, that's gonna add material cost. I measured our alumina ceramic right around 401 thousandths thick. It is our white ceramic. You can see how thick that strike face is. And on the front, we have a drop face foam right around 225 thousandths thick. This helps protect that strike face from getting fallen on. There is a little bit of foam on the outer edge to help for it from any end strikes. Then our second plate here, again, here is our serial number, lot number, date of manufacturer. This was from that lot that supposedly failed the fit test. Our penetrations on this one were the M14 A1 API, as well as that hit of M80 ball here and here. Likely the amount of destruction from the API and the M2AP weakened enough of the ceramic. You can see on this one that our penetrator from the M2AP got slightly deeper into the panel on there. I'll have to confirm the or velocity numbers on that. Otherwise, construction is the same. You know, we've got our drop face foam on there. And that's pretty much all she wrote, folks. Two RMA 1155s from our recalled supposed failed fit lot stopped lots of m2 ap and a bunch of other threats well folks if i were adam and jamie i would say this myth is busted our rma 1155 didn't disappoint it performed right to expectation again 
NIJ level four, you only have to stop one round of M2 AP going 2880 feet per second center of mass. And we did that on both plates. And additionally, we stopped two more rounds of M2 AP on the first plate along with a bunch of other 556 five, threats and even M80A1 going almost 3,500 feet per second. But by the time we threw all those 30 cal threats on that second plate, we found a little ways to get through with our M80 ball. I don't know where RMA is with their appeal process on losing their certification on the 1155, but I myself personally still have confidence in this particular plate. With all that being said, it's time for me to get the heck out of here, but at the end of all my videos, I take a moment to thank all those who helped make these possible because there's a lot that goes in these videos. Number one is my family. My wife and son are actually out here. He is driving me side by side and Amy is running the camera. A big thanks to them. Number two is my Patreon and Subscribestar fans. I have a link tree in the description below like various other content creators. There's discount codes or affiliate tracking codes in there that essentially earn me a sales commission that I put right back, back into the channel to buy different things like our M2AP. I do have one for RMA. I do believe it is Buffman and it's like 5% off. And again, I'm not here to push sales to you guys, but if you want to look at a way of saying thank you to me, that's what those codes are there for. Number three is Blake and Corey over RMA. Again, in full transparency, sent me those plates to destroy with no strings attached. And of course, number four is you all for watching. Until next time, I'll catch you at the range.